Hello! In this video I will show you how you can build a very simple and cheap yet incredibly useful gadget from salvaged parts. It is a device that can detect magnetic fields which is useful for more purposes than you might think. This magnetic field detector can also be used as a quite precise tool to measure the frequency of revolution of rotating parts like axles and gears. Or in other words it can be used as an RPM meter. Since you might not yet be convinced let me demonstrate it to you. This is an older prototype of the magnetic field detector that is based on a Hall effect sensor, which I salvaged from an old PC fan. As you can see by the lighting up of the little orange LED, it gives an indication when it is brought near this niodymium magnet. How these sensors and magnets can be salvaged is shown later in this video. Here we have a quite powerful ring-shaped magnet. The field detector gives a reading even though the magnet is nearly 40 centimeters away. Now see what happens if it is placed on top of the power cord of this water heater. The Hall effect sensor picks up a reading from the magnetic field generated by the strong current that flows through the cord. Now another interesting application is shown. Here we have a book from a local library. Embedded in the book is a permalloy strip on which small pieces of iron are sitting. When I borrowed the book from the library, these iron pieces were magnetized, deactivating the library's security system. See how even this compass only picks up a weak reading when the book is passed next to it. The magnetic field detector is picking up the magnetized iron pieces easily. The purpose of these iron pieces is to saturate the permalloy strip inside the book, preventing it from resonating with the antennas at the exit of the library. Now I have made an experimental setup where a more recent version of the field detector is connected to a lab power supply, while one of the small niodymium magnets is simply put on the chuck of my drill press. The multimeter on the right measures the frequency of revolution in Hertz, while the oscilloscope on the left hand side will display the waveform. As you can see, it rotates at a frequency of around 15 Hz. If you multiply that by 60, you have the value in revolutions per minute, which is around 900 RPMs. Now I remove the cover of the drill press's transmission. And place the niodymium magnet on this pulley that is directly attached to the motor. This time I'm wearing safety glasses though. And we pick up a frequency of just under 50 Hz, which equates to roughly 3000 RPMs. Ok, it should be clear now that Hall effect sensors and niodymium magnets are very useful tools, but it still remains for me to explain how you can obtain them for little to no money and experiment with them yourselves. First of all let us talk about salvaging niodymium magnets. These incredibly powerful magnets can for example be found in old hard drives as well as in CD and DVD drives of all kinds. These are perfect sources to salvage parts from because there is basically no source of electronic scrap that is more abundant and cheap in this day and age. I will just show you the footage of me tearing down a DVD drive while I will have a little talk about these things in general. It's not rocket science to tear down one of these anyway. 
In my opinion, you should salvage as many parts from old PC components while they are still around as you can. Since we are seeing a general trend towards mobile devices rather than stationary computers, I'm pretty sure that 10 years down the line this kind of stuff will be all but gone, at least as a mass phenomenon. Most PCs will probably be either used by gamers, for video editing or other professional applications. Most of those devices, however, will be expensive high-end devices and they will no longer lose their value as quickly as what we are seeing today. And I guess the times where average Joe buys a stationary computer are just over. So now that we are well inside the DVD drive, we pull out this optical unit that carries the laser diodes and other optical components. Then we remove this aluminium sheet and under that we find two niodymium magnets similar in shape and size to the ones I used earlier in this video. Often you can remove them by simply pulling them out with a set of pliers. If it is a higher quality DVD drive like this one, it might also have a brushless DC motor like this one that holds three Hall effect sensors similar to the ones I salvaged from PC fans. The problem with these sensors right here however is that they are harder to salvage in one piece because of the way they are mounted. And speaking about it, let me show you how you can obtain a Hall effect sensor from a PC cooling fan. First you remove the sticker that acts as the fan's nameplate. Under the sticker you will find a shiny axle that is held in place by some kind of retaining ring. With cheap ones they are often made of plastic and quite easy to remove. Higher quality units may have a metal ring though that is much harder to get off. Once the ring is gone you can pull off the rotor exposing the PC fan's stata pack in PCB. You then remove the stata pack from the PCB and also cut away the plastic that is attached to it. This is often quite easy since this kind of plastic tends to become very brittle over time. Once you have been able to separate the PCB from the rest of the device, you have to locate the Hall effect sensor. In this case it is sitting in a small hole inside the PCB. Before you try to remove it, you must trace out its pinout, however. A Hall effect sensor has four pins. One ground pin, a supply voltage pin and two outputs called H plus and H minus. To find out what ground and supply pin are, you simply follow the path on the board. To find out which pins H plus and H minus are, you can check the datasheet of the control I see online and see where H plus and H minus are supposed to be connected. What I always did was to make a photograph of the PCB and mark the pins on the picture. Then I cut out the PCB around the sensor so that I have large solder pads which I can use to connect it to a through hole board. To make a crude detector you can simply connect the Hall effect sensor to an ordinary op amp in this way. If you want to do something more precise you would have to limit the gain of the op amp etc. But this is just a very simple makeshift circuit to use the sensor with maximum sensitivity. On the PCBs of these PC cooling fans you will then find one or often two series resistors connected to the Hall effect sensor. You should read off the resistances and use them for a new circuit if you intend to do so. Inside some fans you will also find integrated circuits that already have an amplifier with a fixed gain as well as other additional circuitry inside. In my opinion they are less useful for experimental purposes. For the second detector that I used for the RPM measurement earlier in the video, I actually bought such an integrated Hall effect switch though. It is useful as long as you don't want to detect extremely weak magnetic fields with it. So all in all what I called a detector in this video is not really a complete device in any way. It is simply a very crude circuit that I used to explore some new ideas concerning what you can do with salvaged parts from old computer components. And I hope I could encourage you to play around with these parts as well.